Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to my weekly update. Now there is just so much going on at the moment. You'll have to forgive me for, for not covering it all off because I certainly can never get through it in, in the time available here. But I do urge you to go to NFU online. Please have a read of, of Bulletin and everything else that, that hits uh, your inbox because I think it's it's changing times. Um, the need to keep up to speed with everything is is, is very pressing, um, not least the impact on, on businesses right now. So many of you will have heard the Prime Minister's speech. For me personally, it was very disappointing not to be talking about food production. Farmers have been the key workers uh, through this global pandemic. The importance of producing our food, retaining our cell sufficiency, no mention of. And I know many farmers that I've spoken to still reeling from the Prime Minister's interview on the Andrew Marr show, where he appeared to show complete disregard for the welfare crisis that is currently going on in the pig sector. But that aside, we did have really good engagement on the stand with MPs uh, and members of the Cabinet. I know Deputy President Stuart Robert thought he had his best conversation to date with Secretary of State for Health, Sajid Javid. Um, and all of this, everything that is going on, of course, is allowing the NFU to have a, a really strong voice in the media. So I've had a very busy week giving interviews. I've been on Newsnight. I was on the Today programme. I did Question Time last night. I had Sunday Times on the farm for two hours. It has been literally non-stop. Um, so... <laughs> I, the economic shocks that are going on at the moment, the situation with, with energy, with rising input costs, we've got a government that is talking about high wage, high skilled economy, uh, and yet we're seeing these, these exponential rises in, in the cost structure for our business. We've got that, we've got the retail price war, um, we've got the situation with Europe, exports 47% down, international trade. All of these things, then when we look at um, the future of the environmental land management scheme and the sustainable farming incentive, which is hoping to have 70% of farming businesses based on it, there simply is not enough detail within the scheme at the moment. Um, there is not a comprehensive enough approach to delivery. And there is quite frankly, not enough money to be made uh, out of that scheme for people to want to base their businesses on it. And all of these things that I have just very briefly mentioned has led the NFU to call for a delay in transition and a complete review of the policy. I would also add to that the fairness in the supply chain that I've continually reiterated must be a prerequisite from stepping back from direct support. And we're seeing it most keenly played out in the pig sector with contracts quite literally being ripped up in front of farmers. Um, influencing a majority government that ultimately can do what it wants, when it wants, is incredibly challenging, as you will recognise from this journey that we've been on. But with a clear conscience uh, and, and looking at this from a moral point of view, as the leader of the NFU at this time, I, I cannot make the decision to press ahead without calling for this review and without getting this policy right. We've got one chance to get it right. Treasury will judge us very dimly if this does not land properly. So we've got to get it right and it needs more detail added to it. It needs to be fit for the modern world. Um, and I, I'll let you know what government's thoughts are on that. I mean, I told George Eustace last week, my thoughts on this and, and the final thing I'd say is Scotland, Northern Ireland and most recently Wales are all waiting till 2024 so to take England out on its own without that detail there I personally think is is immoral and uh, I've made that case to government and we will see what they do. Um, not everybody will agree with that decision, but I think it's the right decision. And from my point of view, this truth to power point right now is, is absolutely at the heart and centre of what we are doing. It's changing times, um, but we've got to get this right. Um, and for the NFU to just coalesce with something that it fundamentally believes is not right would be very wrong. 
So let's see what happens. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Jeremy Clarkson for all that he is doing. We had a lot of people on the stand saying, we really get, as urban MPs, we really get how difficult it is for you guys because, you know, they or their children uh, have been watching uh, Clarkson's Farming. So there is, you'll be delighted to know, going to be a, a second series. And I'm also delighted to say that he won the NFU's Farming Champion uh, at the Farmers Weekly Awards Ceremony last night. Um, so much as we've got challenges, we've got to remember that we are feeding the nation and we've got to have the positive messages out there too. And Jeremy's done so much to get those positive messages across. So with that, I will say goodbye for another week. Please do take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you next week. Many thanks.